Alright, hey guys, it's Miss Scott. Um, today is October 19th. I am not with you today because I am somewhere else. And I wanted to make sure that we got started off on the right foot with our next topic, which is cell reproduction. And to do that, we're going to take some notes today. Our focus today is going to be on asexual versus sexual reproduction. Our objectives for this set of notes, by the end of it, I want you to be able to compare and contrast asexual and sexual reproduction, and I would like you to be able to explain the advantages and disadvantages of both of those processes. So, we're going to start by talking about asexual reproduction and what that means. Asexual reproduction requires only one parent. And the important characteristic of this is the offspring produced from asexual reproduction have 100% the same chromosomes or DNA as the parent. So basically the offspring are exact clones or copies of the parent. When we think about asexual reproduction, the organisms that mostly do this are going to be the unicellular ones, um, such as bacteria or certain protists. But there are some multicellular organisms that take advantage of this as well. Tomorrow you're going to um, take some notes on the process of mitosis, but essentially mitosis is a way that your cells reproduce asexually and make exact copies of themselves. So let's talk about some different types of asexual reproduction I'd like you to be able to recognize. The first one is binary fission. So bi means two, so we're creating two organisms. Fission, um, if you've taken a physical science or, you know, had a little background with nuclear chemistry, fission is the process by which you take an atom and you split it into smaller ones. And that's sort of what we're doing here. We're splitting one thing into two. So this is what bacteria and protists do. Basically, everything is copied at once and then the organism splits in half. Let's see if I can find, yes I can, here's a video of Streptococcus pneumoniae. This is a bacteria that can cause pneumonia. As it grows, this is a process that's been sped up obviously, um, you saw there. But we started off with just two organisms and over time each of these splits into two. And again, this is probably over the course of several hours or days, but it's been sped up for our convenience. Um, but you can see it's a relatively quick method of reproduction. You can make a lot of organisms really, really fast, which is a benefit. So we're going to pause that and go back to our notes and present. So that's binary fission, bacteria and protist. Our next type is vegetative propagation. And vegetative, so this is referring to plants. Um, not all plants do this, but some, if you have spider plants at your house, um, these are, those are the plants that are generally in hanging baskets, and they'll have these little vines coming off the edges of them, and you'll see like these, they look like baby plants. That's essentially what they are. But again, that little baby plant, if you take it and cut it off of the parent plant, you can take it and grow it and make a new individual out of it, but it'll be the exact same as the original. Budding is another type of asexual reproduction. Instead of the organism splitting in half like the bacteria did, here we have a new individual develops from this little tiny outgrowth that we see here and here. So hydra are an example. Um, that's an organism that lives underwater. Um, these little buds will develop and then break off, and then they will grow into a full-size organism and live independently as its own. But again, because this is asexual, this little organism will be the exact same as this one. They have the exact same DNA. Right. And fragmentation, I believe this is our last form of asexual reproduction. Um, but it's sort of in the name what it is, fragment. So an organism will break apart. And that part has the ability to regenerate into a whole new organism. Um, animals, this is an animal that does this. Starfish have this ability. Um, there are certain types of starfish called brittle stars. And basically what they'll do, they have six arms and they will split directly in half. And each half will make a new individual brittle star. 
So again, those two are going to be the exact same. They're now like twins, which is why we classify it as asexual. And again, another organism here. This is like a worm-like creature. I'm not sure 100% what it is, but as it's fragmented, each piece can yield a new one. A pretty neat little process. So here's some examples of things that reproduce asexually. I expect you to know them. This is just kind of a, a small list. This is not everything. But hydra, sea stars, so animals that reproduce by either budding or fragmentation. Strawberries. We have an example here that's vegetative propagation. These archaebacteria and bacteria. And then euglena and paramecium, which are protists. They reproduce by binary fission. And yeast is a fungus that reproduces by budding, similar to the way hydra does. This little bud will break off and grow into a new individual. So that's asexual reproduction. Now, let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages of this nifty little process. The first advantage is that you only need one parent. You only need one source of DNA. So if you're by yourself, you're in luck. It is a relatively quick means of reproduction, um, especially if you talk about bacteria. You can go from one individual to several millions of them in a relatively short amount of time. And in biology, if you're looking at life from a biologist's perspective, that is winning in the game of life, being able to reproduce and pass your genes on to the next generation. So the more you do that, the more successful you are in terms of reproduction. And it creates more offspring. Again, that's what you want it, from a biologist's perspective or biology perspective. The disadvantages, and this is put a big old star next to this one, because I will come back to it many, many times, is that all the offspring are identical. And that in itself is not a bad thing. The problem is, if all your offspring are identical, if something in the environment changes, all your offspring are going to be affected the same way. So what this is, um, why I selected this picture, these little discs, these are petri dishes, and these little discs are discs of, um, of an antibiotic. And this little field that you see growing around it, those are bacterial colonies. And basically no bacteria can grow here because of the antibiotic. If you're sick, let's say with like strep throat or something like that, you take one type of medicine and that's going to kill off, ideally it's going to kill off every single bacteria because it's going to affect it the same way. Because they're all the same. So you might be able to make a, a lot of offspring, but they might all die very quickly if the environment changes. So that being said, keeping that in mind, let's talk about sexual reproduction for just a moment and look at how it's different. The main difference here is that we require two parents or two sources of DNA for sexual reproduction. And because you have two parents, and each of those parents contribute half their genetic information, you, res you end up with offspring that are not the same, but sh they share characteristics of each. So you, people reproduce sexually, obviously, you have characteristics of both your biological parents, but you're not the same as either one. And if you have siblings, those siblings share characteristics from the same two sets of parents, but they're not identical to you. You're all a little bit different. In a few days, um, probably when I get back, we'll talk about this process of meiosis. This process of meiosis is what makes sexual reproduction possible because it helps form the gametes that transmit this genetic information. So, a gamete... I should start off by saying a gamete is basically another way of saying a sex cell, like a sperm or an egg. And for sexual reproduction to occur, you have to have a fusion of those gametes. And the fusion of these gametes is called fertilization. Each gamete has half the parent's genetic material. In other words, they are haploid. So, for instance, um, I'll give you an example. Humans under normal circumstances have 46 chromosomes, a haploid cell has 23, half of 46. When two gametes fuse, you form a zygote with a full set. So two halves make one whole. 
and this is called diploid. So it has two sets, two sets of 23 chromosomes for us, makes 46 total. All members of the animal kingdom have the ability to reproduce sexually. Some animals, as we've already mentioned, do reproduce or can reproduce asexually, but sexual reproduction is much more common. Plants, another kingdom um, where you have both asexual and sexual reproduction. Um, in plants, any plant that flowers or has or has flowers is re, uh, reproducing sexually. The flowers are the reproductive structures, and they contain both the male and female organs. So, and we will talk about this again a little bit more when we get into plants later on this year. But we have the female structure of the plant here, the ovary with the ovule, that's where the egg is. And the male structure here, the anther, and, or excuse me, the filament and stigma and anther that have the, um, or not the stigma, the filament and anther that contains the pollen, which is basically just plant sperm. So fertilization, again, we'll get into more detail with this when we get to um, evolutionary adaptations. But fertilization in sexually reproducing organisms can occur in one of two ways. Either internally, so this is generally within the female's reproductive tract. Eggs are fertilized by sperm within the organism. And we see this in mammals and birds and reptiles and insects and things like that. Or externally, so the gametes fuse outside the individual's body. Um, a very common example of this, most fish reproduce this way, as well as amphibians and plants and fungi will fertilize using pollen or spores. So here are the advantages and disadvantages of sexual reproduction. The disadvantage, compared to asexually reproducing organisms, it's a much slower process. You create far fewer offspring. So one bacteria can produce millions of offspring. Um, for animals, depending on what kind of animals are, you might only have a few dozen offspring in your life, depending again on what species you are. The advantage, though, is that the offspring of sexually reproducing organisms are genetically diverse. Genetic diversity is a huge advantage to have in a world that is constantly changing. If the environment changes, you might lose some of your offspring, but because you're all a little bit different, you're going to respond to the environment in different ways, so there's a greater chance that at least some of you will survive. And that is why, even though this process makes less offspring, it's still prevalent. It's not... It's still just as prevalent as asexual reproduction is on Earth. So what I'd like you to do, to make sure you're okay with these notes before you do your other exercise for the day, and I'll have a video for that, is I want you to write in your notes two paragraphs, six sentences apiece, that describes asexual and sexual reproduction, keeping in mind the objectives that we talked about earlier that you want to be able to compare and contrast them and also explain the benefit of one, the benefits of both and the drawbacks of both.